Hello, this is Samuel from Action Figure Fury, and today I'm bringing you a review of the NECA Nightmare on Elm Street Ultimate Freddy Krueger figures. This one, of course, based on the original Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, and Nightmare on Elm Street 3, um, The Dream Warriors. These are the only Ultimate Freddy Krueger figures NECA have released because of the legal disputes surrounding the Nightmare on Elm Street license, much, which is much the same as, uh, as what happens to the Friday the 13th license, so they both are on hold at the moment, so NECA can no longer release products from either of those properties because obviously the legal rights issues with who they belong to but I know that the recently the rights to Nightmare on Elm Street went to Wes Craven's estate but it's unclear at this time you know what's going to happen if you know NECA release more products there's going to be more films or whatnot but hopefully it doesn't take too long because obviously NECA released some really really outstanding uh, Freddy Krueger figures as well as some um, ultimate J Jason Voorhees figures in the Ultimate Line you know, for Friday the 13th, and they're really, really good. I'd like to see more of them, especially as, as we've got so few Freddies compared to how many Jasons we got, which you'll see in an upcoming video. I haven't got all the Jasons, but mm -hmm. I've got major majority of the Ultimate Jasons. But anyway, uh, let's see you can see all they've got the three figures lined up here in the chronological order. They appear, well, from the film series one, two, and three. I'll probably put these to the side for now and just show you all the boxes. These two figures do stand up pretty darn well, I have to say. Let's just put these to a side here. Really, really good looking figures. Right, I'll put them to a the side so they're not in the way now, so you can, uh, you can have a good look at the packaging. Of course, this is the original uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, packaging based on the you know, original artwork they used. Well, the original poster. Well, one of the original posters, and Graham Humphreys did another one, which is the iconic more. That's more of the horizontal. Uh, yeah, that's more of the, you know, the, yeah, that, that way. Oh, I mean, you know what I mean, you know, the iconic blue poster of the house in the background, and this is the other more iconic original poster. Um, that doesn't, cause, doesn't come with the tagline, unlike the other two. I, I think it's a bit cropped uh, to fit the box. The, the poster is really, really good. You can see the Nancy there, the Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street logo down below. The logo on the side, 30th anniversary. Wow, that was a quite a number. It's about five years old, this figure, then. Uh, 1984, yeah, 30, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, 35 years old, this film, not the figure, but, you know, the film's 35 years old now, wow. Um, you can see an image of the uh, various uh, accessories the figure comes with, of course, there's a big, giant image here of Freddy here, and a brief uh, synopsis of the film, same thing on the other side here, if I open up inside, uh, you got more of Freddy's sweater, uh, where the figure and the accessories will be housed. I know it's a bit dark here, but you can see there's an image of the Freddy Krueger, the ultimate Freddy Krueger. The original Nightmare on the Street, really, really good. I do like the packaging for these ultimate lines. Um, that's some of my favourite packaging. And here we've got Nightmare Street, uh, and on the Street Part 2. Freddy Revenge, you can see this is a wider box, and again, this one came with more accessories than the Part 1. You see, uh, this is the, again, this is the original poster artwork they used in the film. Pretty, really, really nice. Side here, you got nice show. Film pre part two, you got the well from the iconic dream sequence with the school bus on those um, shard rocks. In the back, here, you got the swimming of the school bus. Uh, brief synopsis is the film at the top here. It's a bit, you know, just see it at the corner here. Logo, picture of the Freddy Krueger and his various accessories he comes with. And of course, it's got a listing of the accessories below. Same thing on the other side, there was another spine. And inside here you got the iconic You're All My Children Now sort of uh, pose with the flame, which you just saw with my one. And you also have the where you'd house all the accessories here. So, pretty, pretty good. They've all got um, these little uh, felt uh, snaps, so they always go together pretty nicely. Really, really good p packaging on these. Glad Necker do Ultimate Figures because they're one of my favourite lines to collect. And that one almost fell over. Uh, is that going to stand up now? Yes, it is. Uh, this is the part three Dream Warriors. Uh, strangely, they released the first one, part one first, then part three, then later came part two, which is quite strange. And again, they did that for the they did that for the J the old the Friday the Thirteenth license as well. You got you got the mix, you know, got the mix. It didn't come in chronological order. Depends on how much tooling each figure take to do. So anyway, here's the uh, part three box. There's the iconic poster, of course, at the top there. You can see you can't see the tagline, but it says. If you think you're ready for Freddy, think again. This is the original tagline for the film. You can see a house in the bottom there. This is the original poster. Doesn't really reflect the character in the film, but still a very nice poster. All the same, do dig this poster a lot. On the side here, you've got the uh, the chest, chest of souls. Bottom here, the Nightmare on the Street 3 Dream Warriors logo. On the back here, you've got the iconic mirror, you know, stuff from the mirrors. You've got some of the accessories which he comes with, which is really, really cool. 
uh, really nice that and you got a listing of the accessories below this side same thing again and here we go and here's how they hose the accessories and also there's a great image of Freddy with the chest of souls and the figure really really cool I do love the uh, part 3 figure it's probably one of my favourites of the Freddies I think personally I think it's because it's more like you know I'm not too sure why I love it a lot but it's one of my it is my uh, one of my fa my favourite ultimate Freddy of the three I still love all three of them but the part 3 just uh, clinches it for me I'm just having a bit of a hard time having this uh, I got uh, thing to stand. Anyway, uh, let's bring in the part one. Freddy Kr Krueger. I almost dropped part three, but that's alright. Um, here's part one. I'm sure he's looking a bit muted on camera. This is a really, really good looking figure. This is quite old now. This is uh, five years ago when they started implementing the full articulation on, on the figures. That's what That was the big um, inclination why people wanted to get this, you know, the new Freddy, this Freddy, because he had the full leg articulation. as the first Freddy to come with full leg articulation which they've done now with all three since because every well the figure has been an ultimate so Necker have now fully moved away from this completely static legs to fully articulated legs anyway let's have a good look at the figure this is uh, of course the original uh, Nightmare on Street Freddy so he's got the iconic pizza face yeah, there's a bit of hard time I'm too sure because his skin tone is a bit different but come on Pick up on Freddy's likeness. It just does not want to focus today. I'm always having trouble with this. Hold on. Bear with me a second. Anyway, guys, back now. See if I can try to clean the camera a bit. I don't think it has really helped. I just think... Oh, there we are. You can see the iconic pizza face there. With the open sword, open wounds. Very much, you know, where they got the look of pizza face. Really do love the sculpts. It's like the serious look to his face as well. Like the scowl and the eyes are look incredible on this. I do love the detailing on the neck too. Really, really nice. This is a fantastic Freddy Fruit Kruger figure. And this is my first uh, Nightmare on Street Part 1. I didn't have, I didn't buy any of the... Uh, I got into the line, I got into Necker a little bit late for the original release, but I'm glad I held out and managed to pick this one up, because this one's absolutely fantastic. Of course, this is based on the original Nightmare on Street, so this is the... Um, he has no um, stripes on his sweater sleeves. It's just on the chest, much like you know, how it is in the original film. You didn't get the, the, the stripes until the sequels. So his costume doesn't change much as um, Jason Voorhees. He's going to get some pants below. Not all tattered, quite, quite clean. A little bit of dirt on them. He's got some boots with a bit of dirt on them. Really, really nice looking figure. And of course, you've got the bladed glove, which looks incredible. Really, really do love this. I dig this a lot. Look at the detail on that glove. Absolutely it's outstanding. You also got the cuffs of the uh, jumper. He's more less scarred up hand. Uh, yeah, he's got the um, not so scarred up hand here. Really, really nice. Really do dig this figure a lot. The detailing is incredible. The paint sculpt is just perfect. This was a great sort of setting point for Line Look, showing how good these ultimate figures are. Impeccable paint, great sculpts. Uh, fantastic articulation, loads of accessories, which we'll see in a minute. But I'm just going to put Freddy back at the, uh, put Stan Freddy back over here. So we can get his focus on his face again. Yes, we can. Let's put his uh, fedora on. It's not the same without the fedora. Of course, that's counts as an accessory. And I think before we go over the articulation, I think we should have a look at uh, Freddy Krueger's accessories. So this one does come with quite a number of accessories. Um, let's bring them all over here. I think I've got them all. I believe I have, yes. I've got all the accessories here now uh, with me on camera. Well, near me now. Uh, firstly, he comes with the... Um, when he cuts off his fingers. Now, I think he did this in front of Tina where he cuts his fingers off and all the green uh, blood spills out. Really, really cool. Really grotesque effect. You can see where he's uh, cut one of his digits off. There's, yeah, there's a bit of green, but there's no uh, no uh, actual blood squirts just out that one. Really, really dirty hands. Rather dirty compared to the other one. You can see a bit more dirty. I don't really have this. Uh, don't really have Freddy with this hand on. It's very scene specific, but it's nice that it comes with all the same. It has a really hard time trying to focus on that hand. You can see that there. It's really, really cool. It also comes with the... Your mic. 
Oh, you know, you know, ten times you know, my, my boyfriend down there at sea. Uh, here's the phone he uses with tongue, the iconic uh, tongue phone. Be careful of this; it can be rather fragile. Yeah, mine's not busted or anything. It's just, um, it's just how it looks. It's not busted at all, but it's um, quite very fragile, and it's quite hard to uh, get into focus. Just kept this one. For so ah, yeah, I got the wrong end up. Here we go. Here you go. Let's see. We've got the right end up now. Oh, come on. Doesn't like that for some reason. There we are. There's the phone, there's the wire wrapped around it. And there's the tongue, and there's all the buttons on the phone. Yeah. Bit hard to get them, but you can see them there, the buttons. It doesn't hold or anything, it's just more of an accessory to have on the side. It's really, really cool. The, the tongue detail on there is fantastic. It also comes with the Tina mask. I can't remember what scene the haven't seen Nightmare the original Nightmare on the Street for quite some time. I think he uses this like he wears it and tells when it's. I'm not too sure when he uses it exactly, but because of a Tina face mask, which I'll bring in the other accessory. You you can um, I think you can put it over the skeleton mark, the skull mark, the skull face one. I think I'm not too sure. Yeah, you can. It does fit, but I'm not too sure. I've never had it before, but it can fit over there. And of course, this is the when he peels off his face. I remember he peels off his face to show his uh, exposed skull. This is a fantastically grotesque looking head sculpt. Really, really icky. Really cool. The heads do. I did have a bit of trouble getting the heads on off this figure, so I really just stick to the generic, the, the, the generic head. But it's nice he comes with a multitude of heads. It may change around in the future, but it's really nice. You can see more burns and everything else in this one. And his final accessory that this Freddy Krueger comes with is a smiling head. Now this, I love this face. I love the grinning. It's really, really well done. You can see all the teeth there looking all gnarly. The wide-eyed facial expression is really, really good. I don't know if I may change it to this one because I've got a smiling of Freddy already with the part three. But... This is a really, really cool facial expression. I do love it a lot. It really looks very gleefully evil. Really, really cool accessory. And we have articulation. Uh, Freddy Krueger. I'll take off his hat. I'll take off the fedora. Show off his final accessory. He's quite worn and battered. Fits his head very well. Doesn't cause any marking or anything on it. Um, in way of articulation, Freddy Krueger has a ball jointed head. It goes all the way down like that. Uh, up a little bit, doesn't go so it doesn't go too far back. I'm unfortunate, I think it's because of the sculpt of the head. As you can see, it just hits back there. As a uh, ball jointed shoulder goes sort of forward, backward, up, pretty far, just about there, which is pretty good. Uh, he has single jointed elbows, and he has ball jointed wrists. In the chest, he has a got. I think there's an articulation up there. He's got an he's sort of a a ball joint in the chest. There's no, there's no waist swivel. It's a ball joint, so you can see you can tilt from side to side. No uh, swivel at the waist. He's got. A little, I think you actually have a bit, a bit of a swivel at the waist, but another ball joint down there. Not too sure. He's also got ball jointed hips, which is the which was, this was the what really sold people on this line. And myself, he has ball joint hips, so he goes foot up like that, back okay, outwards okay, and he also has a uh, swivel as well at the, at the and around there as well. He has a single jointed knee. So it goes forward, it goes that belt, it goes like that. And he has uh, ball jointed ankles. So, really, really good looking Freddy Krueger figure. This is a really, for a first, this is one of the first figures they did in the line, and it was a great selling point for the line, and one of my favourite pieces of my collection. This is a fantastic looking Freddy Krueger figure. The only accessory that was missing with this one was the extended arms, you know, from the, um, when he has the, He's chasing Tina down the hallway and he has his arms extended. That's the only accessory missing, but you can use that accessory. If you've got that accessory, you can use it with this figure if you want to. It would be nice to include, I'm guessing they kind of include so many accessories with this one, but it's a fantastic looking Freddy Krueger figure. Really, really good. If you haven't got, I know these go for, actually, I probably should mention at the end of the review that these are a bit hard to get hold of, but if you can get these, well worth getting. I'll put uh, the original Nightmare on the Street Freddy Krueger over here. Now let's bring in the part two. Now this one is the most recent Freddy uh, crew, last, last the Ultimate Freddy they did. 
This is, of course, based on the Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Quite an underrated sequel. Really do dig it. This is a, another fantastic looking figure. As you know, if you're a Nightmare on Elm Street or Freddy Krueger fan, you know his makeup changes and varies from film to film. Uh, so his makeup's a little bit different. It wasn't the first one. It's a bit more colour to it than this one. You can see here, the, a bit more dull here, but this one's a bit more colourful. Of course, he has the uh, striped now sleeves as well. And his hand's a bit more gnarled than it was in the original film. It's, 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 it's not exactly the same sculpt. You can see the, um, the jumper looks a lot bit different how it's sculpted here. That's a bit more upwards. This one's normal. So they basically used the, up, the same upper bodies from the original uh, Nightmare on Elm Street figures, but just with updated leg articulation, which is perfect. Perfect. This is, and again, I missed out on the original uh, Part 2 Freddy Krueger figures. I never been able to find them at all. So this was a great figure for me to get, and I'm really, really happy I got it like, the other year. Let's just bring in a closer so you can have a look at there. You can see he's got his jumper on, he's got his sweater. Really, really nice to take off the hat so you can see the head sculpt. It's really incredible, the head sculpt on this one. I do dig it a lot. There we are, look at that. More gnarled. The sores are more, you know, less apparent, but you can still see that the wet flesh. Really, really good. Do like how the you know, skin looks really, really horrible. Got his reddish eyes, if you can see there. I don't want to focus on his eyes today. For some reason, it just does not want to focus on his eyes. Come on. Come on, Freddy. Focus on those eyes. There we are. You can see those reddish eyes in there. Really, really cool. Gnarled up his, gnarled up skin on the neck. Really, really good head sculpt. Looks really angry, this head sculpt. Compared to the others, really, really cross and angry, this one. Do dig it a lot. Of course, he's got his iconic bladed glove. It doesn't look the same as it did in the original. I do like the sculptor. The blades are a little bit bent, but that's not a problem. Looks really, really good. See the wrists there as well. A bit burnt flesh. The little slightly less, uh, like slightly brightly coloured sweater. A bit more brighter than it was in the first film. Of course, now with the stripes, this one's nice. Same pants and boots as the original. Just slightly different coloured boots, I think. A bit like like a shade of brown. I think with this one. Yeah, I do dig this Freddy a lot. Rather underrated sequel. Really, really good looking figure. And before I like, go on the articulation, I'll show off the accessories it comes with. Uh, firstly, it comes with the... Uh, uh, his iconic fedora, which is a bit more beat up than it was in the uh, original film. A bit more worn and torn. Fits his head very well. Because I know some people had complaints with the original Nine Elm Street figure that Necker did when they would put the hats on because the paint they would use on the head, the hats would have a tenacity to rub on the head and cause black marks, but uh, they've sort of fixed that problem with the Ultimate figures, so that doesn't happen at all now, which is great. Um, anyway, that's the hat. His other iconic accessory, well, other accessory comes with is from he um, comes out the pool. He goes, "You're all my children now." And uh, this fit, this is fits because uh, it's got a magnet here. You can see just the same. If you look closer, you can see a slight white disc, and then that's a magnet, and there's a magnet within the figure. And you can uh, put that on like that, and you recreate the iconic scene where he shouts, "You're all my children now," like he did in the um, inside image of the package in there. Fits on really well. I've never had a problem with this. I know some people complained. That you know, have it, uh, it would tend to fall off. I've never really had that problem with it. The magnet's pretty strong on the figure, and there's a nice uh, effect to it, look to it as well. You can see there, uh, it starts off as white and gets more darker, sh uh, darker shade of orangey red at the top. Really, really nice. Fits his back very, very well. And it's nice to co include some flame effects pieces. I'm hoping the neck could continue to do that. It's a really, really nice looking piece. Goes in his back very well. He also comes with two dogs from the finale of the film. Those the two nightmare dogs with those human faces. Rather, rather, these two look rather grotesque, as you can see. I think they've reused this body for the uh, for the uh, like alien free uh, accessory packs. I think it's a similar breed of dog. I can't remember. They they do remind me of that. You see, the paint is the same on them on these two 
the collars are the same it's just the difference is the head and these heads are, are absolutely icky uh, these even have these even have articulation have a board I'll just bring in one they have board uh, they have a board jointed head so you got a bit of motion out of them the detailing on these is great and of course this is pivotal because these uh, these were in the finale of the film so it's nice that Necker included these you know, these two these two pieces they good, look good standing on each side of Freddy that's how I've displayed what well, you'll see in the future upcoming video later this week how I had this displayed but these look really really disgusting especially this one here all this blisters and sores oh and boils Ugh. Really, really nasty. But I do like Luke Lemon a lot. Put those to the side for now. But he also comes with uh, um, uh, when he comes out of I forgot the name of the, the, the uh, that's his name Jesse. When he comes out of Jesse has like a or I'm not too much seen he has, but he has a, a flesh flesh glove where it's you know where the blades come out. I think yeah, I think this is probably not one of the sequences where I think we're. Jesse transforms into. Her. I haven't seen the film for a, for a while, but I do remember uh, the flat, the hand, well, the fleshy hand with the blades coming out. I do remember that from the film. I don't exactly remember where it's from, but I remember this hand's a bit of a pain uh, to put on, but it does look really, really good. Really do dig that a lot. He also comes with two extra head sculpts. Um. The two head sculpts he comes with. This is a more gritted teeth, angry expression. They were even more extremely angry compared to the other one. That was a bit more uh, sedate compared to this one. It doesn't want to focus. It does not want to focus. Come on, focus. There we are. It looks a bit more angry, this one. See the more gritted teeth. Really, really flaring eyes. Really, really angry. There we are. Really, really good looking head. The detailing on these heads is fantastic. The other one he comes with is when he's, um, you got the body, I've got the brain. And he picks the flesh from his brain, <laughs> from his head and exposes the brain. That looks fantastic. Really, really wet looking. Really, really nice. I think the original Nine Hour Street Two Fears Necker did also came with this head as well, so it's a good reuse, especially for those you know who never get it. You can see the tongue in there and the teeth, the eyes, really, really nice. Fits the head very, very well. But I just, I, I stick more with the this head here because it's, you know more, you know, it's not very this because this head's very speed specific, whereas this one isn't. This one's more generic, and you can see the makeup's rather different. From the first film to the second, so that's why you know, I just keep that generic head on there. So you can see this uh, that Freddy comes with quite a lot of number of accessories. I'm going to put these accessories back to the side. And I'm bringing Freddy himself back again. And the range of articulation, Freddy has a board jointed head. This one's a bit stiff. On there, it's a bit tight. You can get up. You can get a bit up. You can get a bit down. You can, you can get more side to side out of him. You can get more articulate, not a bit more range than the first one. And you can go back a little bit. It's really nice. You can really see those red eyes there. Ooh. He has uh, board jointed shoulders. So up, forward, back. You no, know, that range of motion that's really, really nice. Single jointed elbows again. Which is what Freddie came with. And he also has uh, board jointed hands, which is important. He has a board joint in the chest up there. So you go forward a bit, back, tilt. He's also got a waist swivel or a board joint away. So I'm not too sure if that's a board joint or waist again, again, because it's hidden by the sweater, so you can't really see it. He's also got board jointed hips. So you go forward, back a bit, out. And also got uh, you know the same like say basically the same reuse of the legs but painted differently, and also got the uh, single jointed knee. And he also uh, swivel you know, the sort of, you know turn it that way as well. He's also got board jointed ankles. Though these ones are a bit tight, I think the pants, but they look really really good. Does work well. I have no problem with these uh, Freddy Krueger figures standing up at all. So really really nice. Let's put his hat back on so that I can uh, bring in part three. Which is my favourite of the uh, 
Freddy Krueger figures. Now this is the part three. I'll put his hat back on. This is my favourite of the bunch. I really, really do. It's not because I love. Uh, I really do love Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three, the Dream Warriors. I just think, just the way this figure looks, you know, Freddy's makeup in this film, and everything else, and the accessories, just puts this one above and beyond the others, in my opinion. This one's just a little bit better than the others. It just, it just works for me on a different level, and I do love the uh, more gleeful, uh, gleefully, you know. Uh, more quotable Freddy, I do like. I know the more serious one, you know, the first one, he doesn't have so many iconic lines, it's a little bit of humour. This one's got where the humour comes in a lot. But I do like it, it's very, uh, I think it's more to do with just like the character, you know, the, the Freddy character is fully developed, has all the quips and the one lines, the jokes, and also, you know, more, the more iconic look with the brightly coloured sweater, you know, and the makeup's more defined and everything else. Yeah, you know, it just inches the others for me, and this is an incredible looking figure. Really do love this uh, Freddy Krueger figure a lot. As you can see, the uh, look, the figure looks outstanding. I'll just give you an overview right now. See, there, it's the same legs. We all use the same legs. That's not really a problem. He never, his outfit never really changes at all. Really, really good. See, the jumpers are slightly more vibrant. They would get brighter and brighter. I think about part four, part five, we got really, really vibrant. Unfortunately, I haven't got any phrase from that film, those films yet because of the rights issues at the moment, but you know, uh, one man can hope. Really love the uh, vibrancy to this one. If I bring in the head sculpt to take off the hat, so you can, see, you can see the head. Really, really pizza face looking. It just doesn't want to focus today. Again. There we are, look at that. Look at the detailing on that. You can see the teeth, the eyes. The, the burnt flesh, really, really cool. This figure looks absolutely outstanding. The gnarled skin around the ears as well. The neck looks grotesque. Oh, I do love this Freddy Krueger. Do love it a lot. Again, I never got picked up any part three Freddy Krueger figures, so this was a must-have for me. Really, really do love it. You see a sculpt line down the side of the sweat, and you see why. In a, you can see why. You'll see why in a little while. It's also got the iconic bladed glove, a bit more straight than the others. The glove doesn't really change much. I think it just changes in colour. Not too sure if they ever really redesigned the glove. I know they did in uh, New Nightmare, but I think the glove much changes the same. It's just the paint on them is slightly different. I do love the Freddy glove. Such an iconic weapon. And this weapon, this one does it really, really good. I think the only complaint that you can have is I wish they probably had some variations on the hands, like come with some uh, different hands, different bladed glove hands, you know, with the glove in different poses. That would have been pretty cool. I know uh, Mezco are doing that for their 112 free, which I am tempted to get because I'm such a Freddy Krueger fan. Really, really cool. See the hands still... Uh, it isn't so uh, gnarled as the second one. A bit more or less gnarled, but the paint is really good. You see the stretch marks and the skin and everything else. Really, really cool. See, the ta this, uh, like the part two jumper, is the jumper's a bit more tattered. A bit more uh, wear and tear in this one. Really, really nice. Really, really nice looking figure. In the way of accessories, this Freddy Krueger comes with quite a number, and I think I'll... Firstly, he comes with his fedora, which is removable, no problem with here. Fits in his head very well. Looks good with it, with on or with off. Well, on, <laughs> with it on or with it off. Um, his other accessories he comes with is these interchangeable head from the finale of the film. Uh, this actually got a light feature. So if you had a, a torch, it would shine through the, crucif uh, the cross on his head, which is awesome. I know this is one of the heads they used in the part three, came with a part three Freddy as well. This is the only interchangeable head he comes with. But it looks really, really evil. See the teeth there, the tongue, the eyes looking up. Really, really nasty. Do dig it a lot. But as it's very scene specific, I'm more keep the generic one on there. But the paint on this and sculpt it is just as good. Yeah, I have a bit of problem interchanging the head on, on this one. I have some problems with it as well. But I just keep that head on there because it's, you know, it's more... Uh, more generic. 
He also comes with uh, the syringe hands. I do have a problem with these getting these on, but they're so cool. Let's get high. These look great. I know they use these as well, I think, for one of the um, from one of the gen general part three Freddy's they released. I think I can't be can't remember those that was so long ago. But these do look great. You can get that let's get high pose. Really, really nice sculpt of these. See the skin's really gnarled on the bare hand here. And the gloved hands chained with the blades to the syringes. Really, really nice sculpt to these. These look really, really cool. I do dig these a uh, hell of a lot. These other accessories that Freddy comes with. He also comes with the interchangeable chest of souls. This is really, really cool. You can see here, this, it, I'll show you how it pops on the moment. You can see all the, the faces there coming out of his chest, the knob, uh, burnt skin. Really, really horrible looking. To get it off, you just peel, because uh, you can see the seam here on, on Freddy. All you got to do is um, lift it, and it has a tenacity to... Oh, it's easier to put on than put off. Hold on. Yeah, you can just... Uh, put it off there. You can see the articulation, it's just a ball joint uh, in this one because of the interchangeable chest feature. And you can just pop this one on. Like so. This is where he uh, tears away his jumper, revealing the chest of souls of all the poor, poor children he's captured. Remember when he did something, he pulled away the jumper. Really, really good. I wonder if they ever did a part four, if they would ever come with a, you know, the massive chest of skulls and the attachment with the arms. That would have been pretty cool, but I'm not sure if they ever, they ever if they would have done that in a part four, if they did an ultimate part four, but it would have been pretty cool. So you can see that looks really, really good. But again, it's very really C-specific, so I will keep the generic one. But I do like this tattered jumper bit hanging from the side. is really cool. So pop, they're easier to pop on than to pop, pop off than to pop, pop on. Pop off and pop on that one, but this one goes on pretty darn well. Now I put the more generic one on there, the more yeah, stand just sweater front. Uh, let's just get Freddy to stand again. Yeah, he, no, he's not gonna yet, he will yet. Is he standing now? Yes, he is. Okay, uh, that's that. Um, other accessories he comes with from the film are these two pieces. This is the uh, Freddy marionette puppet, which he uses to torment one of the children, or one of the kids. I do remember this from the film. This is really, really cool. I know that the Necker had trouble trying to do a large scale marionette puppet. This is really, really cool. It, that's not much how it looks in the film. If the camera wants to focus. Because uh, these accessories are so small, I think the camera has a hard time focusing. As you can see, there's got a Freddy head smiling. Really, really good now. Yeah, it's not really focusing on too much, but uh, Scott is pretty good. It's just like black eyes, mouth, and stuff. And you've got these uh, little bladed hand as well. If I take it to the top, it doesn't really focus. It's quite small, but you can see it there. You get some articulation with this. He has a. Uh, Swivel at the head, swivel at the shoulders, and uh, that's it. And there's nothing else. No, there's nothing else. You see, it's got quite a made of wood, which I do like a lot. The sculpt of this is very, very good. And this puddle of blood is stuck to his, is affixed to his foot so it can stand up. It does stand pretty well next to it. I do have, I've had some problems with standing, but as you can see, he stands pretty well. And the final accessory comes with is the Elm Street house which I forgot the name of the, I forget the name of the girl who builds it in the beginning she builds this house it's nice it comes with this I know one of the other ones the Retro Freddy's came with this as well it's a really really nice accessory it looks really like made out of paper mache and uh, the lollipop sticks so it looks, this looks really really good really nice accessory it's nice to have it standing next to Freddy it looks absolutely excellent. And we have articulation. Freddy Krueger. This one has a ball jointed head. It goes up. Okay. Goes down. Goes down okay. 
Uh, ball jointed shoulders, you know how it goes before, up. Goes up pretty far more so up than the others. Um, uh, ball jointed elbows. Ball jointed wrists. Ball jointed in the chest, you saw when I took the jumper off. Ball jointed hips. You've also got a swivel there as well. Single jointed knees and ball jointed ankles. So the range of articulation, well, you know, articulation all three Freddy Kruegers are the same and it, it works very, really, very incredibly well. This is a fantastic uh, Freddy Krueger figure. And of course, unfortunately, if you haven't got these figures, these can be quite difficult to get on the secondary market. But I know you can get, um, I don't advise it, but you, there are bootlegs on the internet. I know some people have reviewed them and they're quite similar in quality to the originals, but I wouldn't really advise getting them unless you're really, really desperate. But I'm hoping that um, NECA can... Uh, you know, well, the right issues get sorted, and they can probably re-release these figures again if you haven't got them, because these are really, really good-looking figures. And hopefully, they continue making um, more Ultimate Freddy Kruegers from Part Port, Part Port, ugh, Part Four, Part Five, and Part Six, and Part Seven. Hopefully, I know they did a redo of Part Seven, uh, New Nightmare. Um, so hopefully, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. But as the rights issue is now held up, these are quite difficult to get hold of. You can find them for reasonable prices, not the bootlegs I mean, but you can get bootlegs as well which are similar in quality but just be aware of those. This depends on your personal if you want to get bootlegs or not, depends on how much you're a big Freddy Krueger fan you are, but I'm guessing most fans uh, now when they managed to pick these up when they came out. I think they re-released this one, uh, the part one, a number of times, and I think they released the part three a number of times, but part two I don't think they did because it was the most recent one, the last one they've done. But hopefully, if Neck get you know the rights issue gets cleared up, Neck can re-release these figures on the market so you can get them. I'm really desperate to get the uh, court scale part three. I've seen images of it, reviews of it, and everything else. It looks incredible. I would love to get it because my favourite look for Freddy. It's just a matter of um, getting my hands on it. I hope to go out to pick it up sometime in the near future. It just depends on finding it here in the UK because the availability gets a little bit tight on finding it, but it's one thing I can hope I can find in the future. Anyway, guys, I hope you just enjoy this retrospective review on the NECA Ultimate Friday, um, <laughs> NECA Ultimate Night on Elm Street Freddy Krueger figures. These are a fantastic line of figures to get. This is a great line, well, great little line within the Ultimate line itself. Highly recommended. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this retrospective review. Please like, share, and subscribe. There's plenty more content to come. Bye for now.